Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here tonight as we are sitting here in my kitchen as I'm making some chili. It's going to be a good night. Tomorrow is finally the day that we have been waiting for for years. I, uh, I think I've built that up just a little bit too much. I think that honestly there's a lot of people out there waiting for Goldberg to return to wrestling. Um, there was people that wanted to see Goldberg go into TNA um, during the Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan era. There's been people who've wanted Goldberg to go back to WWE um, since easily WrestleMania 27 um, through WrestleMania 31. Um, there's been always been rumors that this is the year that Goldberg will return to WWE. In my mind, if I thought Goldberg ever returned to WWE, it would be just really to go into the Hall of Fame. Um, with the success of his uh, uh, WWE Blu-ray, the Goldberg Ultimate Collection, um, which will be linked down below, um, I think that honestly, that is the first time that WWE really realized that there was a demand for Goldberg, that people really liked him. Um, Vince McMahon brought him in after the close of WCW once his contract had ended. People thought that this was going to be a big boom for WWE at the time for the fact that, you know, mainly on the last episode of Nitro, when it went up against Monday Night Raw, there were so many people that watched Monday Night Raw and Nitro together that were wrestling fans. And then WCW closed... And then the next night, or the next Monday, when there was just Monday Night Raw, what do you know? A lot of people didn't show up to watch Raw. You would think that Raw would easily double its ratings, its number of fans. If, you know, there was two groups of wrestling fans, ones that watched WWE, ones that watched WCW. The ones that don't have WCW anymore are easily just going to flip over and watch wrestling. And those people just started watching TNT Loves Drama or whatever was going on with them at that time. But Goldberg finally came into WWE. Um, the, the deal was that he was going to have a long um, series of matches against The Rock that was going to last a year. Goldberg did come in, have one match against The Rock, as I believe, at No Way Out. Um, and, and that was his sort of like his debut match. Then The Rock left to go make movies. And Rock and Goldberg never really got to have the run they thought they were going to have. Um, basically, Goldberg came in, he beat Triple H uh, for the championship. Triple H got the championship back. Um, and then sort of Goldberg just sort of floated around. You can remember that Goldberg was a big part of Eddie Guerrero um, winning uh, the championship at... Um, maybe that was at No Way Out. Uh, maybe I was wrong on, on the pay-per-view that, that was Goldberg versus Rock. but Because I, I think that No Way Out... In, in San Francisco um, was where Eddie Guerrero beat Brock Lesnar. I remember being a, a fan, of, not being a, a fan who wasn't really paying attention at the time, who saw that match being built up and like Eddie Guerrero has no shot to win the championship because I hadn't been watching wrestling in about a year, so I had no clue that Eddie came on strong. Um, Brock and Goldberg were starting their own feud at the time that was going to be WrestleMania 20s, um, one of the headlining co-main events of that show. Two big guys going in there and brawling it out, and what do you know? When it comes down to it, both guys are going to be leaving the company. One because Goldberg. Um, just wasn't getting along with Vince. He signed a contract to be for so many dates. And Vince, you know, needed him because he was needing stars at the time. And Goldberg didn't want to work because he didn't have to. His contract said, I got to work this many days. Vince is saying that, like, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense when guys don't want to make money. Goldberg wasn't a big, you know, fan of being a wrestler. He needed something to make some money, and that's what it was. And, and that's all it was to him was a job. I don't think Goldberg ever really wanted to reach out and be a star. Um, he just needed to do what he needed to do to get on down the road. Um, but, I don't know. Goldberg is going to be coming back. Last week, we had Paul Heyman issuing the challenge, uh, basically saying that Goldberg was on ESPN running his mouth, um, saying that he was you know, the guy who beat Brock Lesnar. He was one to know. He thought that he could beat Brock if they had a fight because they had been exchanging back and words because he'd beat him once before. Just needed some time to train. Paul Heyman came out and said, hey, it's now or never. You fish you the challenge. Brock wants to fight you. He wants his win back, which is going to happen at the Survivor Series, and um, put the challenge out there. By the time the segment was over, Brock Lesnar had issued the challenge or answered the challenge, basically saying that he was coming to Raw, which I think is going to be being held in Denver, which I could be wrong on, and that he was going to be there. So Goldberg on Raw is going to be going down. This is going to be huge. This is going to be something that, that people have been waiting for years and years and years. I'm betting that you know Brock is not going to be there, but we are going to say here, uh, you know, Brock, 
getting the the, the, the the challenge from Goldberg, basically saying that you're next. We haven't had anybody who's, who's, who's last since 2004, I think, or something like that, whenever WrestleMania 20 was. But um, I think this is going to be big. I think this is going to be a big thing. I, I would bet that I don't think people tune in for all three hours, but I, I bet you a large base of fans that have not watched Raw continuously or for a long period of time are going to be there. People like, you know, Ravi, Assault and Battery 777. He's pumped about this match that's going to be going down at Survivor Series. More because of the fact that he's going to be, no, not because of the fact that he's just going to be there in Toronto at Survivor Series, but because of the fact that he's always liked Goldberg and think that Goldberg return is going to be really big. So we'll have to see. Uh, I'm kind of skeptical about what the match is going to be. We haven't seen Goldberg wrestle a match in, in years. And I mean, like, I just don't want to see what happened to Sting happen to Goldberg. So we'll see tomorrow night on Raw what's going down. Peace out, everybody. See you guys down the road. Oh, shoot, guys. I, I almost forgot. I ended the video too fast. I forgot that I was doing the Raw 5-point preview. This is going to be for October 17th edition of Monday Night Raw. I got a little bit fired up that we were talking all about Goldberg's return. He's going to be answering Paul Heyman's challenge. Also going down um, is going to be, we'll, we'll have to see, from uh, Mick Foley as well as Stephanie McMahon, will they be answering the challenge of SmackDown? Uh, basically, where there's going to be three Survivor Series matches going down at the Survivor Series. You'll be having a, a, a men's five-on-five Raw versus SmackDown Classic Survivor Series match, as well as a five-on-five women's match. And then what I think is going to be a really good match and really fun to see is because of the fact that I love tag team wrestling and WWE seems like they're really trying to get their foot back into the game with tag team wrestling. A five-team, ten-man classic Survivor Series match. Three on three. Uh, winner take all to see who is the better brand, Raw versus SmackDown. Bet the money on SmackDown. Uh, just the way it always works out. Um, basically, um, Shane and Daniel Bryan uh, put the, the the answer out there on the uh, the table to see what's going to be going down. I think that honestly, you're going to be getting the Goldberg match. You're probably getting uh, championship matches from both brands. Uh, and then these three Survivor Series matches will be filling out the card. Um, that's just my opinion because I don't know how you're going to get so many women, so many tag teams if you're, if you're using... Um, if, you're, if you're not going to be using the champions. But I think that definitely... We'll be seeing at least Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens or some sort of a match uh, using those guys. And then you'll have, you know, your Roman Reigns, um, even probably teaming with Rusev, Chris Jericho. Um, and hopefully they'll, they'll bring the walls down. And, you know, baby faces will be baby faces, heels will be with baby faces, and it'll just be Raw versus SmackDown. Sort of like the bragging rights pay per views used to be. Always love the build of bragging rights. Never really like bragging rights, but we'll see what's going to be going down with that. Um, the question here is that can Kevin Owens escape Seth Rollins' wrath this week? Um, basically, Seth Owens, uh, Seth Owens, uh, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Owens, um, sort of, I don't know, you can look at it both ways. He either, uh, dodged a bullet, by having Chris Jericho not enter in by losing his match to Seth Rollins last week. Or, you know, basically he could have used the help of Chris Jericho by helping two-on-one defeat Seth Rollins. So, you know, there was pros and there was cons for Kevin Owens if Jericho got into that match. But last week we got a good one between Seth Rollins and Chris Jericho. Turns out that Seth Rollins was able to beat Chris Jericho, keep him out of the three-way. We know that this was the plan. And then if Jericho isn't going to be in this match, maybe he'll be the special guest referee inside the cell. I think that they find some way to try and put the offer back on the table, trying to get Jericho back into that cell. Because the three-way seems to be the, the, the direction with the rumors we've been hearing about for a long time uh, for this match. So uh, we, we don't know what's going to be going down, but uh, something should be. Uh, and then we have is Sasha Banks and Charlotte Proof. Um, is Charlotte, is Sasha Banks and Charlotte proof going into Hell in the Cell? Which I have no fucking clue what that even means. To me, that honestly really doesn't make any sense. But uh, I'm not the biggest fan. I was thinking about recording a video right after this one about um, Sasha Banks and, and um, Charlotte going into the Hell in the Cell match. I think it builds a lot of an anticipation for the match. I think it builds a level of... Uh, uh, I think it builds a little bit of... Um, like, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say here? I think it, I think that it honestly puts um, a, a level of like, uh, 
what the match should be before the match even happens. Um, I think that honestly, it's not going to be the best idea to put the women into there. The the Hell in the Cell to me has honestly been like a, a bloody bloodbath, like it was with Taker and Sean, like it was with Foley and Taker. Um, you know, even when it was with Sean and Triple H, lots of really go, uh, lots of really good um, battles have happened in the Hell in the Cell. Um, and I don't know how the women can be there. I know they're trying to break down the barriers of, you know, the, the men's matches meaning more than the women. Uh, we've already had, um, you know, the women headline an NXT show. And we've seen them main event Monday Night Raw. Sometimes I feel that those matches just main event shows just to be the fact of saying they main event shows just trying to say that they're putting the girls on the top. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, Sasha Banks versus Charlotte to me. Is is a feud in the women's division? Is it big enough for them to go inside Hell in the Cell? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I I don't know. I think it just builds a, a level of expectations that I'm not sure they can really get there. Um, from there, we go to Ken Cesaro and Sheamus get it together before um, their tag team title match on Monday Night Raw. I'm guessing that means that their tag team title match isn't going to be happening at Hell in the Cell, but it is going to be happening on Monday Night Raw, which is... Kind of weird. Um, I don't know what they're doing with Sheamus and Cesaro. They're not building them to win the titles, which in, in my mind is a plus for the fact that um, getting the titles off of, of New Day is a plus because I think they've gone and done just about everything possible there is for these guys to do. Um, we'll have to see. And then there's uh, Will Bailey be forced to unleash her vicious side against Dana Brooke. Last week we saw Dana Brooke attack Bailey as Bailey was. Um, you know, uh, you know, doing her little pose down with the whole deal. Everybody was all pissed because Raw was in Oakland, which is you know close to where Bailey is from, and, and she grew up going and seeing Raw and everything there. Um, Bailey versus Dana Brooke should be a good match. Um, it, it's a second um, headlining match for the women's division, so that's a plus um, since Bailey isn't going to be in the uh, the picture for the uh, the women's championship as of right now because of the uh, the Hell in the Cells. So. Um, at least she's not getting left behind. So that's going to be Monday Night Raw, headlined by Goldberg, answering the challenge of Brock Lesnar. See you guys down the road.